Okay, so in this video I want to give a broad overview of game theory. Uh, specifically, I'm going to just look at normal form games, and we're going to illustrate the concept of Nash equilibrium, and we'll do it through a series of examples. So, let's analyze our first game. So imagine that there are two firms and they've conspired in a price-fixing scheme. So they're going to act as a, as a cartel, they act just like a monopolist together, and then split the profits. But they go home after striking this bargain, and they realize that they have one of two options. They can stick by their collusive agreement, and in this case we're going to say that they earn, say, $10 million in profits if they stick by the collusive agreement. Or they can cheat on the agreements. If they end up cheating, they end up getting a bump in profits and then essentially stealing some of the profits from, uh, from their, uh, their collusive partner. Um, but now if both of them cheat, uh, they end up in sort of corno competition. And what's going to happen is that profits will be driven down from the monopoly and they'll end up splitting a smaller amount of profits. So they have an incentive to collude, but you can also see that uh, the cheating on this agreement is going to be counterproductive from the standpoint of these two firms. So let's go ahead and analyze this game and as show how to find sort of equilibrium strategies and find the Nash equilibrium in this game. What we have to do to specify uh, the equilibrium strategies is we have to kind of put ourselves in the shoes of the, each of the individual players of this game. So imagine that we are firm A. I could imagine that firm B will collude. And then I can ask, well, given that, what should I do? And then the second part is, imagine that firm B will cheat on the agreement. And then given that, what should I do? Now the numbers in these boxes, the first one belongs to firm A, and the second one belongs to firm B. So when we're analyzing firm A's decision, we're going to look at the first numbers in the boxes. So let's look at, given that firm B colludes, what should firm A do? We are not done yet. We need to also consider well, what happens if firm B doesn't collude, but in fact cheats. Now we've analyzed firm A's decisions given what firm B's potential actions are. We can do the same for firm B, just put ourselves in firm B's shoes. Remember, firm B's payoffs are the second numbers in these cells. And so we can analyze firm B very symmetrically, just covering up the rows to determine what firm B is actually going to do. So imagine that firm A colludes. What is firm B's best choice? If you ever have two circles in the same cell, that's what we call a Nash equilibrium. Now in game theory, Nash equilibrium is our basis for predicting what we expect to happen. Um, so you can see that the incentives of this game are set up such that we would expect both firms to cheat on the collusive agreement. And it gives us a rationale for understanding why firms would end up with payoffs of 7 and 7 when the they agreed beforehand to have payoffs of 10 and 10 to abide by this collusive agreement. So Nash Equilibrium gives us a prediction for what will happen in this competition game. Um, so this is, a, this is one example of how to solve a game. Let's turn to another. Okay, so here's a game called the Battle of the Sexes. So imagine that we have two players to this game. We have Tony, we have Shanna. And they need to decide where to go uh, for their date tonight. Uh, but they can't communicate. They have to decide simultaneously. And they have to end up uh, sort of just showing up to either the football game or the ballet. Now, the strange thing about Tony and Shanna is that they like to spend time together. Um, Tony likes football better. Shanna likes the ballet better. So, but they like being together more than they like being apart and at their favorite event. Um, so if Tony goes to football and Shannon goes to ballet, they get a payoff of zero. They're sort of, sort of sad relative to, well, I'd rather be at the football game uh, with, with my significant other, or she would rather be at the ballet, or she'd even rather be at the football game than at the ballet by herself. So 
Let's go ahead and analyze this game in a very similar way to the way we analyzed the competition game in the first example. So let's imagine that Shanna goes to the football game. In that case, Tony is choosing between a payoff of 2 if he goes to the football game and a payoff of negative 1 if he goes to the ballet. 2 it is. If Shanna goes to the ballet, Tony is choosing between 0 if he goes to football and 1 if he goes to the ballet. So you'll see that this strategy that Tony employs is not quite the same as the one we had in the, uh, in the competition game example. The competition game, the strategy didn't depend on what the other player's action was. In this one, it does. Now, in the competition game, when your strategy does not depend on what the other player does, that's what's called a dominant strategy. This is just a strategy that just depends, uh, depends on what the other player does. This is not a dominant strategy, and we're going to get different features out of a game with strategies like this than uh, games where we have dominant strategies like the competition game. Now let's analyze what Shanna's uh, optimal strategy is going to be. If Tony chooses to go to the football game, she'll reluctantly go to football, choosing one over zero. And if Tony goes to the ballet, Shanna will choose 2 over negative 1. So using our prediction here, Nash equilibria are where we have two circles in the same cell. So what you'll notice here is the funny thing about this game is that it has two equilibria in pure strategies. So we have uh, football. Football is an equilibrium. If we both show up at the football game, neither one of us wants to unilaterally go to the other option. Or if we both show up to the ballet, that's also an equilibrium. Neither one of us wants to unilaterally leave and go to, uh, go to the other action that we could actually take. We don't have regret given the action of the other player um, if we end up in one of these two cells. And so this is what's known as a coordination game. It has multiple equilibria, and one might ask, well, how do you choose between these two equilibria? Well, there are multiple ways of actually narrowing this down. Uh, one thing is, in the real world, Tony and Shanna can communicate. Uh, the game is sort of much more broad, much more complex. There's a lot of communication. There's repeated interaction. And that will tend to condition which of these equilibria you would tend to see. Uh, another uh, another re way to choose which, which of these uh, that you would expect to see uh, is the is that of focal points. So sometimes an equilibrium, uh, the equilibrium that's selected is the one that revolves around a focal point. When you're coordinating, it, it's good to have something just stick out in your mind is just the thing to do. So maybe for Tony and Shanna, going to the football game is just the thing to do, and that's what they expect the other person to actually end up doing. And so we'll end up sort of gravitating around one equilibrium or another. But to know what the focal point is, we need to have some sense for the context. Uh, to give you an example of a focal point, imagine that someone says, let's meet in New York City. Now, there are, only, uh, there are many millions of places to meet in New York City, but you don't pick randomly among those various places. You pick... Um, if you ask a survey, where, where do you meet in New York City, if you were asking a friend to meet in New York City, many people would say you know, Grand Central Station or the Empire State Building or the Statue of Liberty. Landmarks, those are focal points. And so in a very similar way, strategies can gravitate around focal points and we can get a, a way to resolve what's going to have happen here. Unfortunately, from a standpoint of understanding behavior, we have to understand the context of the game uh, and, and what, uh, what the focal points are in that context to understand what equilibria are ultimately selected in that game. Um, so it's a bit bothersome that our Nash equilibrium concept gives us prediction that two things could happen, um, but at least it narrows it down from four to two.